This season, Liverpool have been far from their best. While much can be blamed on their injury record, more has been expected from defending champions. The Reds have just won twice in the last 10 Premier League games, with only Fulham, Newcastle, West Brom and Southampton picking up fewer points than Liverpool in that period. So how can Jurgen Klopp try and improve his side? I think the main improvement the German can make is simply freshen things up within his system. Liverpool's title-winning 4-3-3 that deploys an aggressive counter-press without the ball and with it attacks in a 2-3-5 attacking structure with fullbacks acting as the side's primary playmakers is an exceptional system. But Klopp hasn't evolved it and teams are starting to work out how to stop them by closing down their fullbacks and man-marking the six. However, the system still has a lot of life and just needs freshening up rather than throwing out. Compared to last season, Liverpool's pressing numbers are down, and so is the creativity offered from fullback, mainly due to Trent Alexander-Arnold's form. In fact, Liverpool are making 16% fewer pressures per 90 this season, whilst Trent's expected assists per 90 are down 37%. So it's no wonder that Liverpool are struggling with two of their biggest strengths underperforming by so much. So how can Jurgen Klopp fix this? First up, I'd look at changing Trent Alexander-Arnold's position Position. He's been one of the best attacking fullbacks over the past two seasons, but it's starting to become a bit predictable, crossing from deep positions, which makes Liverpool easy to defend against. And with him struggling for goal involvements, providing just one assist in his last 10 Premier League games, he's falling back onto the same deep crosses rather than trying something new. What I'd like to see is Trent moved into central midfield, where he can operate as a Matzala. This more advanced central position would put Trent into new territory, but one that he's got the skill set that he can thrive in. It could also shift the attacking structure, the right winger holding the width, Trent in right central midfield in an inside position with the right back in an inverted support role. This more advanced position would allow Trent to have more of a varied impact in the final third, allowing him to create with something else other than just crosses. Don't get me wrong, he could still cross from a similar position to where he usually does, but he'd have the option to do other things. He could look for through balls in behind for the other forwards, or he can make underlapping runs to get to the byline. Think how Kevin De Bruyne operates for Manchester City. Trent has the talent to be that good, and a shift in position could take his game to another level, whilst forcing him to do something different as he plays his way back into form. It's also not like central midfield is a new position to him either. He played there in the majority of his youth career, only breaking into the first team as a fullback. Trent in midfield could also benefit Liverpool without the ball too. Recently, Alexander-Arnold has become a target for the opposition, with both Manchester City and Leicester City looking to focus their attacks down his side and isolate him 1v1 with a left winger. Moving him into central midfield would take away this defensive weakness for opposition to exploit. The only question is who would play at right back. I think James Milner would be the perfect candidate for the role. Not only is he a good, no-nonsense defender that usually does well in 1v1 duels, but he's got the experience playing at fullback. However, he's the latest addition to Klopp's injury list. Until he returns, I'd like to see Nico Williams given a chance. By playing as an inverted fullback that comes into midfield and simply supports attacks, Williams would be under far less pressure to emulate Trent's incredible attacking returns, and he could just focus on improving the defensive aspect of his game. Moving Trent into central midfield could also improve Liverpool's press. One of the major reasons for Liverpool's struggles has been Klopp's decision to move his best ball winners, Jordan Henderson and Fabinho, into centre-back to cover for his defensive injuries. However, this has severely reduced the effectiveness of Liverpool's press, especially in the middle third. Combine this with Liverpool's higher line, it gives the opposition more time to pick a direct pass up and over Liverpool's back line. Thoughts echoed by Arsene Wenger when discussing why Liverpool are struggling. One of the main reasons is they lost Van Dijk. One of their main strengths was winning the ball high up with Henderson in midfield. By losing Henderson at the back, they lost that. They had a success because they won the ball high and fed their forwards. They've lost a bit of that with injuries and the changes to the system. Adding Trent into midfield would add aggression and effective pressing into that zone. In fact, Trent's pressure success rate across the last three seasons would have ranked him first amongst Liverpool midfielders last season. Whilst his 2.8 tackles plus interceptions per 90 across the same period would have put him third amongst Liverpool's midfielders last season. This evolution of passing attacking fullbacks into central midfield isn't unheard of either. Fabinho played a lot of his early minutes at Monaco at right back before moving into defensive midfield, whilst at Bayern Munich, Joshua Kimmich has gone from the best attacking right back in Europe to the best controlling midfielder, and Trent definitely has the talent to make the transition. This change also links with the next one I'd look to make. 
which is rejigging the attacking lineup. Salah, Mane and Firmino aren't just excellent in their own positions, but they're very versatile too. To accommodate Trent's move to an advanced inside role, a switch in positions would be needed. What I'd like to see is Mane on the right hand side, Salah through the middle and Firmino on the left. What this would offer in attacking structure is players with their stronger foot on their natural side holding the width, Firmino in a more naturally creative position and Salah closer to the goal. To evolve Liverpool, I think they could do with becoming more balanced. And with this structure, they'd have direct dribblers out wide, creators inside and their main goal threat through the middle. Whilst this could reduce Mane's ability to score, but even this isn't certain, statistically for Liverpool, he actually scores more and assists more per game from the right wing than he does from the left. Changing flanks will give him more opportunities to beat his opponent on the dribble before picking out a teammate with a low cross, which would benefit the team and especially Salah. And this links to the next point, the method of Liverpool's chance creation. Over the past few seasons, it's been whipped crosses into the box, overloading the back post and getting headers away. But Liverpool need to change. Teams have worked out how to defend against this, dropping their back four, narrowing the penalty area and waiting for these balls to come into the box. What Liverpool need to do now is look for cutbacks or low crosses into the box to move their opponent. Now when they're considering facing the back four, that back four could be shifted backwards, then that space could open up in between their lines. Something that needs to change at Liverpool, low crosses into the box. But also looking at Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane, the pair have been quite disjoint this season. Frequently they're games where they only combine a handful of times, not what you want from your best players. Playing Mane on the right and Salah through the middle would force them to link more, which would only benefit benefit Liverpool. Meanwhile, Firmino and Salah would take up their starting positions that would better suit them as well. Take their combination play against Manchester United in the FA Cup. Wijnaldum in possession for Liverpool. He carries into United's half and passes it to Firmino, who quickly turns and plays it to Salah, who finishes 1v1. This goal was a quality possession move from Liverpool and wasn't created by Firmino dropping off the line and dragging the centre-backs out of position for Salah to exploit the space, but instead it came because of Firmino's excellent vision and technical ability to pick out the pass and Salah's movement and goal-scoring ability. And it's not like the Egyptian can only play on the right either. He scored 19 goals and registered eight assists in just 22 Premier League games when he's played as a striker. And this change in position could see the trio hit a new goal-scoring stride. And finally, Liverpool have to get a ball winner back into number six. Unlike a lot of positions in Liverpool's system, the number six is a specialist role. When Liverpool are in full flow, the six is on hand to kill negative transitions and allow Liverpool to maintain attacking pressure. Without a specialist in this position, Liverpool are much more vulnerable to quick counter-attacks. See Marcus Rashford's goal, he scored in the FA Cup, which came from Thiago, failing to regain possession. Or Jamie Vardy's winner for Leicester, where Wijnaldum is indecisive, which allows Tielemans to launch the counter-attack. They do a lot of work defending the wide areas and even when Liverpool are defending their box, often they'll shift over to double up with the fullback to stop forwards cutting inside. Without a specialist in that position, Liverpool have struggled. In their 4-1 defeat to Manchester City, Sterling was able to isolate Trent Alexander-Arnold 1v1 and this led to the winger winning a first half penalty, bypassing Trent on the inside and getting into the box. If Fabinho was playing there at number 6, they're less likely to have that chance and it takes away that inside route that Sterling goes through that leads to the penalty. And Klopp is aware of this danger of isolating fullbacks 1v1. In their 3-1 defeat to Leicester, the Foxes look to do something similar to Sterling with Harvey Barnes, but Klopp countered this using James Milner as a shuttler to protect Trent. However, an injury in the 17th minute cut this short and Thiago couldn't do the same job. It's clear the difference between Henderson or Fabinho at centre-back compared to the other young centre-backs isn't that big, so Liverpool should commit to playing the centre-backs in the first team and allow their best ball winners to return to midfield. This will not only further improve the press and potentially increase the number of dangerous turnovers Liverpool can force, but it should give greater protection for the centre-backs. Henderson and Fabinho are the only two capable of playing this number six role at Liverpool. The composition of Liverpool's midfield is one of the most underrated parts of their 11. Their energy and hard work allowed them to dominate matches in their title-winning season, and Liverpool need to return to this to see out this rocky period. I think a lot was expected of Thiago, but it's clear that he's detracting from Liverpool's high-tempo style. Not only is he a poor tackler as seen by his increase in fouls per game, with him already making more fouls in just 11 Premier League appearances than he managed in his 24 Bundesliga appearances last season for Bayern Munich, but he's slow 
slows down the play too much. At least for the time being, Thiago should be used as a plan B to be brought into the system to change a game. It's not been easy for Jurgen Klopp this season. He's had a constant list of first team injuries, a lot of them who play in the same position. But it's time for him to change things up and return to what made Liverpool such a dangerous team in the first place. Aggressive, high-pressing football led by the front and creativity from Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson. But anyway, guys, what do you think? How would you fix Liverpool? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?